Okie dokie. Okay, we got the record button pushed and quick little sound check. Everything sounds okay? Okay, awesome. Thanks, Nancy. Okay, so we're doing our practice today with the honeybee breath. And just to refresh your memory about all the benefits of the honeybee, the humming, any kind of humming, in yoga we call it honeybee or brahmari breath, reduces stress on a cellular level, uh, lowers blood pressure, improves heart rate variability, which is the way that we rebound after stressful situations. Uh, it in, induces a parasympathetic nervous system activation, which is our relax, rest, and restore mode. Uh, what else? Calms the mind, helps with sleep, calms the nervous system, it opens our vascular system, so it helps with our breath, helps our body to get more oxygen, blood flow, nutrients, uh, it's a really long list. Anti-inflammatory, um, what else? Uh, serotonin, all of these good things happening. So I think what we'll do is we'll start with a honeybee practice and then we'll move into our poses. So find your seat. If you're not already sitting, get comfy. It also helps to lower anxiety. Let's just take a couple of deep breaths and just connect with the breath. Inhale and exhale. Just allow yourself to come into the moment with your awareness. So letting go of the day, the events of the day. Just allow yourself to be present here in our group. And then we're gonna take five rounds of the honeybee breath. So the lips are together, the teeth are apart slightly. There's a little gap and we're making a long hum. And what you can do is take the hands and rest them on the face, the middle finger gently on the eyelids, the forefinger just above the eyebrow, the ring finger just above the lips, the pinky finger just down in the lower jowls area. And then the thumb is gonna just gently press the cartilage so that the ear closes. And when you do that, when you gently press the cartilage, you hear your own internal voice, your own internal vibration. So go ahead and do five of your own timing. Make it as long and stretched out as you can. And then when you're done, just release your hands down to the knees and just see what's there. Notice what you feel and sense when you're finished. So go ahead whenever you're ready on your own timing. Mm -hmm. You're ready come onto hands and knees meet me in tabletop and we'll explore with a little bit of movement doing the honeybee so my teacher in India used to do this thing where we would do a whole class exploring honeybee and this class is kind of based on that where we do different things with the honeybee and just sort of see the effects so just setting up your tabletop here knees under the hips so we're gonna go through cat cow your inhale your sway back cow breathing in through the nose then you're gonna honeybee as you go into Halloween cat, humming as you arch the back. And then you're inhaling to sway back cow, just go at your own pace. 
and your honeybee humming as you go into the Halloween cat. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and take a few more rounds at your own pace. And then come into child's pose, sink your hips back to your heels, rest your forehead on your hands or the mat, and just find a nice comfortable child's pose, hips sinking back. Just take one honeybee breath here. So lips together, teeth apart. Inhale. Continue to breathe and just notice how that honeybee is calming to the mind. Notice it makes your exhale breath longer. Slows the breath down. Take one more breath here. Sinking the heart down. Inhale, exhale. Good, and then go ahead and walk up. Find the padding under the back knee. Step your right foot forward and come into a low lunge. Back toes can be curled under. You can find your hands on blocks if you want. Shift your hips forward and down. Wiggle your toes forward until your knee is over your ankle. <sighs> Relax your shoulders, lift the chest, and we'll take one honeybee breath here. Inhale. Continue to breathe after you're done humming. The other thing that's interesting that happens when we make a humming sound when we're in a pose is it helps to create space where we can potentially go a little deeper in the pose. And that just happens naturally. It's also kind of a, like a pain reliever. So if you're in something that's quite strong sensations, it helps to take the edge off of that. All right, so let's go ahead and straighten the front leg and hamst find a hamstring stretch. So flex your front foot, walk your blocks back, and then bring the heart towards the shin, back of the neck long. Spread your toes. We'll take one honeybee breath here. Mm -hmm. Continue to breathe. So you might notice that effect of as you're humming, you notice that you automatically sink deeper. There's some space there that you get invited into when you're making the hum. All right, and then let's step forward to the lunge again. Bring your blocks on the inside, walk your right foot to the right side and come into lizard. You don't need blocks if your hands touch the ground. You can do different heights of the blocks. Shift your hips forward and down. And then we'll take a little twist, right hand on the right thigh, just turning over the right shoulder. And we'll take another honeybee breath here, twisting to the right side. Mm. and then gently untwist. Come back to center and step back and change sides. Left foot steps forward. Start with your low lunge. Hands on block. Shift the hips forward and down. Adjusting so that your knee is over your front ankle. <laughs> Relaxing shoulders. 
Once you're set up here, letting the hips sink down, take your honeybee and imagine the vibrations going into the front of your right thigh. Here we go. The other little happy side effect that I've noticed when I do this honeybee practice in the evening is that it tends to really help increase melatonin for sleep. So you often have a good sleep after this honeybee practice. Okay, let's straighten the front leg, hamstring stretch, walk your blocks back to where it's comfy. Flex the front foot, take an inhale, and when you're ready, make your hum, holding the heart forward. Keep breathing natural breath. So we're actually getting a double benefit if when we're doing our honeybee we're imagining it going into the area that we're stretching. So we just put our attention in the backs of the leg, back of the leg as we're humming and imagine the vibration going into that area. Okay let's come into our lizard, bend back into the front knee, bring blocks on the inside, walk your left foot over to the left side of your mat. Shifting hips forward and down. <laughs> and then we'll twist to the left. Take your left hand to left thigh. Look over your left shoulder. Lift the chest. And one hum here. Inhale. And then one thing that we, uh, direction that we follow is that there's the little space between the teeth. If your teeth were touching together, it would chatter because those bones are connected to your head. It would chatter your whole head. So that's why we keep the teeth apart slightly. Well, let's release, untwist and come back to tabletop and then child's pose once again. So. Taking the knees a little bit wider this time, like a wide knee child's pose, moving it into the groin. Rest your head. You can take your knees as wide as they're willing to go. And then imagine the vibration going into the groin here to help it to release. Take your honeybee. slowly walk yourself up and we'll come in to thread the needle so pad the knees one more time hands and knees position taking the left hand re reaching the left hand up as you inhale slide the left hand down and under the right arm dropping the left shoulder down left side of the head resting on the floor and if they don't touch you're just sliding a bolster underneath your head and your shoulder so that you've got some contact to rest on. <sighs> and we're going to take a honeybee here, right into the spine. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and hum. Mm -hmm. Ready to inhale, slide the left arm back out. Exhale, change sides. Inhale, reach your right arm up. Exhale, slide it down and under the left side, as far out to the left as it will go. Resting that right side of the head, right shoulder to the mat. And taking your one hum here. Inhale and honeybee. Mm 
Beautiful. When you're ready to inhale, slide the hand out and just do a couple of cat cows here to rebalance the spine. You don't need to do honeybee if you just doing it with regular breath. Nice and sweet. And then when you're ready, come to seated, swing your legs out to the side and find your blanket fold sitting on your folded blanket. We'll take the legs wide. <laughs> My blanket's stuck. <laughs> Taking legs wide and then flexing the feet. We can widen the sit bones here, lift the hip, pull the flesh up and place the hip back down, doing that on both sides. It's helping to manipulate the sit bones and the pelvis so it's tipping forward. All right, let's do this with a little bit of a flow. So feet are flexed, press your thighs down. Inhale, reach the arms up. Honeybee, as you reach to the right side. Then inhale as you reach back up to center. Press your thighs down to anchor. And honeybee to the left, reaching left. Inhale as you come back up to center. Honeybee forward and down. And we'll hold here, continuing to breathe. We'll take one more honeybee. Inhale. Just letting your natural breath flow here. We'll stay for a few more breaths. You could do ha breath here. Letting yourself melt on the exhale. Lift a little bit on the inhale and then melt a little bit on the exhale. Just kind of riding the wave of your breath. This pose can be really good for posture as we work to tilt the pelvis forward. When you're ready to inhale, gently walk yourself up. <laughs> Take a little lift in the front body, bring your fingertips behind, lift the chest. Take a nice bright breath into the front body here, lift the heart. Good. And then gently release and we'll come into butterfly legs. So can help the back of the knees, bending the knees, bringing soles of the feet together, bringing heels in close. And then if you need to lean forward to find your edge, feel free. Or you might stay more uh, straight up and down, holding the ankles and lengthening up through the crown. It's up to you, wherever your edge is, find it. And then we'll take two honeybee at your own timing. When you're ready, teeth apart, go ahead. here for a few more breaths, ha breaths, sighing exhales out the mouth. One more breath here. Beautiful. And we'll go ahead and walk yourself up up nice and slow. We'll just release into some windshield wipers here, taking the feet apart and then just letting the knees lower from side to side. Good. 
Mm. Yeah, nice little release through the hips. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and I think we'll come to laying to the back. So ease on down to the mat, flat on the back with the knees bent. Arms beside the body, setting up for bridge pose, just making sure the head is straight and there's nothing underneath your head, just your head on the mat. You want your ankles under your knees with your feet about hip distance apart. The toes pointing straight forward. Now we're gonna do this with a flow with honeybee. And remember how I said that honeybee makes your exhale a lot slower? So this can be used for a lot of different beneficial ways when we're flowing in and out. So let's play with that here and just notice what that effect of the honeybee is on your rolling bridge. So whenever you're ready, on your inhale, you're gonna inhale and peel the spine up off the floor, lifting hips, inhaling through the nose, lifting the back, coming all the way up as you breathe in. And then we're gonna honeybee on the way down, making your hum, slowly lowering down as you hum. Mm -hmm. Once your hips are on the mat, just take a couple, take a couple breaths and just rest there for a moment. So what we're going to do a couple more of those. And what I want you to try to do is let your breath dictate how long the movement is. So your inhale breath, you're going to be moving up and your honeybee, you're going to be moving down, but you want to have your honeybee end when your hips touch the floor. So matching your movement to your breath. So let's go ahead and do three rounds. Whenever you're ready, you're gonna inhale, raise the hips up as you inhale up. And then honeybee and slowly release down with the hum. Mm -hmm. Good, do two more like that. Two more with your own timing, inhaling up, exhaling, honeybee down. <coughs> Excuse me. Last one. After the last one, lean your knees together and take some breath into the belly, just resting on the mat. I'm just noticing the effect of that honeybee breath. One of the big things that happens with honeybee is it increases the nitric oxide in your system by five, times by 15, which helps to open up the blood vessels, among other things. So a lot of benefits to that. Just Google nitric oxide and you'll see. Let's take a couple windshield wipers here, just letting the knees release from side to side. It's also a great breath to do to prepare for meditation. So it's just a good sort of palate cleanser. Nice. Let's come back to center and cross right ankle on left knee. We'll take a four square here. Flex your right foot. You can either leave the left foot on the mat and press your right knee away from you with your right hand, or you can lift the left foot and hold behind the left thigh. Wherever your pose takes you, and we'll take a honeybee or two. Go ahead.
Continue to breathe here, relax your shoulders, relax your jaw. So another thing that can happen with the honeybee is it can loosen up phlegm in your throat. It can help to tone the glottis. So it's very often happening that people will cough. It will cause you to cough. And that's a good thing. That's a cleansing that's happening, a toning of the, of the throat. So if you need to cough or loosen your throat, that's so natural, so normal for this kind of breath. Okay, let's release and do the other side, left ankle on right knee. And just notice as you come into the other side, notice the effect the honeybee has on the pose. So just whenever you're ready, go ahead and make your two hums. Observe the effect the honeybee is giving you here. Notice what's there. Okay, now we're gonna keep the legs in this formation. Release your arms and stretch your arms out to the sides, palms facing up. We're gonna roll the knees over to the left side coming into a twist. Now you wanna keep the feet flexed and active. So the left foot's on the outside of the right knee. As you come into this twist, knees are on the left. If that's not comfy for your knees at all, just take your left foot off the knee and do a modified windshield wiper instead. And then if you like, we can play with a honeybee breath here. Inhale, nice deep breath, fill the lungs and then make one hum. Notice all the space that's there for your next breath to come in as you inhale and fill that space up. body, your brain filled with oxygen. Good. Let's gently uh, come back to center, uncross, and we'll cross right ankle on left the last time. You can bring the left foot up off the floor if you want a little deeper twist, or leave the left foot on the floor. Lower the knees to the right. So now the right foot is on top of the left knee. It's on the outside of the left knee. And you can let the left leg slide into whatever position it gets, it naturally wants to go into. And the knee, the left knee might not be all the way down to the ground. That's okay. If your knee is comfortable, keep the foot there. Take a honeybee. One more breath here with a smile. As we rounded out our practice and get ready for our restoratives. You can gently bring the knees back to center, uncross the legs, and bring your knees into the chest. Give the knees a little hug here. Oh, <laughs> feels so good in the low back. You can rock a little side to side. stay here or if you want to take a happy baby to finish off feel free it's your practice you get to choose all right so then let's go ahead release the knees or the feet 
roll to the side and walk yourself up with helping hands. So we can set up our first restorative. We're gonna do a restorative warrior pose, which is kind of an oxymoron because <laughs> warrior is usually a strong standing pose. We need our bolster for this. <laughs> and we need a block and a blanket or a pillow for the head. And I'll show you the setup. You're gonna start by laying on your left side with your head supported at the same level. So your neck is in line with the spine. You're in fetal position, so your knees are bent. Then you're gonna take your top leg, your right leg, and stretch it back onto the bolster behind you. So, you know when we do warrior one, there's one foot step forward, that's our left foot, our left knee. And then the right leg stretching back is our back leg. So the trick to this restorative version of warrior is to make sure that your leg is supported under the knee, the foot, and the ankle. So you might need extra pillows or extra blankets to fill up the space. Like for me right now, my knee is really kind of not supported on the bolster. There's a bit of a, a gap. So that's not going to be very comfy. We want to, oh yeah, put another folded blanket under the knee perhaps. So the right leg doesn't have to be straight at all, it can be bent, but just make sure that there's support under the foot and the ankle and the knee. So you don't want any joints uh, hanging in space. And then the right arm can do whatever it wants. You can relax it in front of you or on the side of your body. And what can sometimes happen in this pose is you, because people ask me this all the time, is that sometimes it feels like your body's rolling back, like it wants to roll back onto its back side. So if you can, try to position so that you're laying on your side. And when you fully relax, there's, when you relax, you don't fall backwards. So making sure that you're laying on your left. Taking a nice deep breath in exhale a sigh and let every molecule of your body release into the supports. You can tuck your chin slightly to stimulate that parasympathetic activation. Close your eyes. And just rest. Restore your warrior. Tiny smile in the corners of the mouth. Soften your forehead area. Soften your eyebrows. Your temples. Soften around your eyes. And just follow your breath as it gently enters the nostrils, fills the lungs, and then leaves the lungs and comes filtering out through the nostrils. Just following the path of your breath.
enjoy a few more breaths here and just feel your limbs grow heavier your arms your legs Gently expand your breath, inhale deeper, exhale a cleansing breath out the mouth, and then gently slide your right leg back into fetal position, the top leg, bringing the knees in. Take a breath. When you're ready, just slowly make your way to the other side. So you can roll to your back. Use your feet to move the bolster behind you. Lay on your right side. Starting in fetal position, laying on your right side. Knees pulled into the chest. And then your left leg is the top leg and you can stretch it back onto the bolster and making sure that you've got support under your ankle, your knee. So sometimes it takes a bit of wiggling around to make sure your bolster's in the right position. <laughs> to get the support that you need underneath your leg. So the back leg, the left leg can be bent. It doesn't have to be straight. Just making sure that all joints are supported. Once you're situated there, taking a nice deep breath in, exhale, sigh out, and let the whole body release down. Imagine that every molecule of your body is relaxed. There's not a single cell of your body that's holding tension, not a single molecule that's engaged, completely passive. Relaxing the face, the jaw, and just being soft here. Feeling and enjoying the breath as it moves through your body. Enjoying the quiet and the stillness and the opportunity to just be, just be you. See if you can soften your brain here. The thoughts will come automatically, but when you notice the brain goes into thinking mode, when you notice that, send your mind back to your breath to just feel and experience your breath as it comes in. 
Follow the path of your breath through the nostrils, down the windpipe, into the lungs. Follow it as it exhales back out. Notice gently the slowing of your breath. As you relax deeper, the breath naturally slows. As the breath slows, the thoughts in the mind tend to also slow down. yourself one more nice deep cleansing breath here. Expand on the inhale, soften on the exhale. Slowly bring the knees together, fetal position, take a breath. When you're ready with helping hands, gently guide yourself up, roll up vertebra by vertebra. And then I want to give you a choice this evening of either restorative child's pose or legs on a chair or legs up the wall. So if you kind of check in and see, you might know already, already which one is the, is the one that your body needs or wants. And then when you're decided then go ahead and come into that chosen pose either legs up or supported child's pose 
with the bolster underneath the belly and the head. Make sure to fill up the space under your body if you're doing restorative child's pose using extra pillows or blankets so that you get that nice contact of belly, heart, and head. You can either have head center on the hands or turning head to the side, whatever's comfy for your neck. Check it out. Closing eyes. Take a deep breath in as you exhale. Release the body down. Let yourself get heavy and soft. And just feel the progression, the steps or the layers of letting go with your breath. Each exhale, you feel another layer of tension peel away, like layers of an onion. Another exhale breath, another layer of tension peels away. Peeling away the layers of tension as you breathe until you become progressively softer and more relaxed. Give your mind a break from all the hard work of thinking. Let your mind rest on your breath. The release of the body through each exhale. If you're in child's pose and you have the head turned to one side, gently take this moment to inhale head center and exhale it to the other side. If you're in child's pose with your head turned to the side, just changing sides for a few breaths.
One fun little game I like to play in restorative poses is to pick a part of my body to consciously relax even deeper than it was before with my exhale. So you might take your awareness, say, to your arms, for example, and try to relax your arms even more as you exhale out. So it's a conscious relaxation, a conscious letting go. You might take your attention to the muscles around your eyes and do the same thing. Try to relax your eyes even more. As you breathe out, maybe your forehead, just move your awareness to different parts of your body and play the game of inviting them to relax even more than they were before. Maybe your lips, your throat, your tongue. You might be surprised to find all sorts of little pockets of tension that you didn't realize were happening still. That's something that I like to do every time I do restorative yoga. So you can do that too if you like. Anytime you come into a restorative pose or a shavasana, which is also restorative. Let's take one nice deep breath here. Exhale it out. And we can make our way into shavasana. Slowly, gently changing position and taking yourself down to the mat for final relaxation. You can put a bolster under your knees if you like, blanket over the body if you've got some AC blowing, just to take the draft away. Stretch out the arms and legs. Take a deep breath when you get there. Sigh it out release down, release your whole body down into the earth. And you may continue to do the scan through the body. You might start down at the feet and just check in with each part of the body and challenge yourself to see if you can consciously relax each part even more. Let it go even more. Your feet, your ankles. And just continue using your own awareness with the intention to relax even deeper with each exhale. Letting go every nook and cranny of the body. Letting go into deep rest. Thank you for joining. May all beings be peaceful, happy and free. Namaste. Feel free to continue your scan, your conscious relaxation for as long as you like, playing that little game with yourself. Have a beautiful evening, sweet dreams, and we'll see you all soon.